Hey everybody, this is Adam Kokish here at the Libertarian Party State Convention of California. And I'm here with up and coming rising all-star of the party here, Kevin Shaw. Kevin is involved on a number of levels, was just elected today to the State Executive Committee as an at-large representative. What are, what are your other titles within the LP, Kevin? I'm also a uh, chairman for the San Fernando Valley and regional representative to uh, the Libertarian Party of Los Angeles County. Now, I, you're also running for, for office. That's true. Uh, I'm running for State Assembly, District 32. So really putting his money where his mouth is. But I, I got this is not like some accomplishment, accomplishment in and of itself. This is like he showed up to four meetings, he collected four titles. I, got, I, got, <laughs> I mean, I, I'm, I'm not exaggerating that much, am I? That's, that's pretty accurate. <laughs> he, he, well, today there was a competitive vote, and, and uh, it, it was great to see that, that the membership of the California body as a General Assembly elected him to be part of the executive committee. But I always like warning people, if you go to a Libertarian Party meeting, there's a big danger that if you get up and go to the bathroom, you might come back and find that you've been elected to an officer position. So just to put that in perspective. But no, Kevin is doing great work, not just with all of that within the party, but really one of the things that I appreciate about Kevin is that he, he is bringing in an attitude of activism and engagement into the party where he's he is running for office, but it's not just... You know, well, you know, I'm running for office because I want to tell people how to do things better because libertarians love doing that. But that he's actually engaged in doing other activism that's incorporated into that and part of his message. So you got uh, at Pierce College, you had an incident. How long ago was this? Just about a year. So it's been a whole year and this is still active legally, but you are passing out constitutions on a college campus in the Socialist Soviet Republic of California. And what happened? Uh, they threatened to have me removed physically from the campus if I didn't stop. It was, yeah. It's pretty ridiculous. And how did this play out? Uh, well, I, I questioned, I was like, what am I doing that's so offensive? I'm passing out the documents, the, the founding documents of our nation. What could be more innocuous? Uh, and they didn't care. They threatened to physically uh, remove me and my friends. We were just trying to create some unity, you know, tell people the libertarian message. And at that point you left? You didn't, uh, th there was not a ruckus involved? I left, and uh, after exhausting the proper channels, I contacted a lawyer. So you did, you did assert, like, hey, am I being detained? You had an engagement with the police. How did that go? I, I said to them, you know, we're, we're peacefully asserting our First Amendment rights. We're students. We pay tuition to be here. Why can't we speak? And uh, uh, he really did not have an answer for us. In fact, he, he insulted me by say, stating that in, in restricting the speech of students, he was protecting my rights as a student. <laughs> yeah. Your right to not be exposed to the truth. My right to be silenced, yeah. So there's a lot of issues with this, but before we get into the, the bigger implications, tell us about the lawsuit and where you're at with that. Uh, well, I'm actually still in uh, a federal litigation right now. I, I expect sometime in the next few months I get my time in front of a judge. They just keep delaying it. Um, and over the course of the last year, the school district has spent over $110,000 fighting me to maintain their unconstitutional free speech codes. Now, I, I always, you know, as someone who's engaged in a certain amount of civil disobedience myself, I find that the big mistake I always make is uh, underestimating government's ability to make things messy. <laughs> and like delaying is one of those things where you're like, yeah, we're going to have our day in court sometime this century. No, we're, we're probably just going to dissolve government entirely before we get to that point. But yeah, they, they drag these out. And I hope that is, is, there, is there some chance for the, the administrators who are responsible for it, it already wasting $110,000 defending an illegal policy, is, is there going to be some accountability for them? I don't expect that there is. Um, I, they've gotten away with it forever. This rule was written in 1987, three years before I was born, and in that time nobody has challenged it. So my anticipation is that they're not going to be punished, and um, the best I'm, I'm hoping for is to strike the rule down. So, well, who, who are the officials that are behind spending $110,000 on this? I can't say. Some really bad legal advisors would be my guess. Uh, they're not going to win. I don't know what, the, what they're doing with taxpayer money. All right, so what are the bigger implications of this case, and what do you hope to come of it? If I should win, uh, over 150,000 students will not have to deal with uh, free speech zones when they attend campus, or whatever their political leaning. And that's my goal. Awesome. And what's your website where people can find out more about your race and everything you got going on? Uh, right now, I'm doing most of the stuff from my uh, from my Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash Kevin Shaw for the number four Liberty. Uh, but you can also check me out at think-liberty.com. And yeah, you'll Get a plug in for Think Liberty. Oh, dude, you got to check out Think Liberty. It's a bunch of uh, crazy youth activists like myself writing articles, making memes, going out and uh, engaging with the public, spreading the message to the new generation. Think-liberty.com. Thank you very much, Kevin. Thank you. Thank you to YouTube for hosting this video and for being an essential part of human progress by making video hosting available worldwide to everyone on the internet. However, 
The next phase in human progress is here with Steemit.com and their video hosting alternative blockchain-based solutions, including DTube. And you can find that through Steemit.com as well as my own page there, at Adam Kokesh. This is a decentralized blockchain-based social media network that pays you fairly for your content. Already, I'm regularly making more there with a single post than I do from an entire month on YouTube. So please join us on the next frontier of the information revolution at steamit.com. And if you want help getting a leg up there, I'm happy to re-steam your posts and make sure that no one is starting from scratch. Just email me one of your favorite posts at adam at and we'll share it on my feed.